Welcome to the Center for Universal Oneness. We are an open, welcoming, spiritual community that supports all faith traditions and invites you to join us on your spiritual journey. We host different speakers each week to guide and inspire us. We are guided by universal principles of acceptance of all that is sacred, and we strive to live in the oneness of love. Please enjoy this presentation. And her topic is living from peace. Today is the uh, second day of, or second Sunday of Advent. And uh, peace is the key word here. Jackie is a unity minister who was ordained in uh, 2013, is that right? And uh, she has been a senior minister in this area. And uh, Jackie and I were talking about being a senior minister, and uh, she's moving on from that. She said, there's just an awful lot of time when you're a senior minister that's not your time. <laughs> and she has been elected to uh, serve a three-year term on the leadership recruitment and development team of the Worldwide Ministries, but she's also on the admissions team. So Jackie's been real busy of late going over applications for student admission to the ministry. And I'm sure that's a, a very worthwhile endeavor. We're really glad to have you back with us, Jackie, even if it is a foggy day in California. Thank you so much, Doug. And thank you everyone for uh, inviting me, for having me here. Let's just take a moment, first of all, to to center ourselves. So let's take a deep breath and allow ourselves to be. Our theme being living from peace. Just look around the, the Zoom room to see the faces, to enjoy the love that you see within people. Look at the pictures of the, if the actual physical folks are not there. Just give ourselves some time. Just give ourselves some time so often we do not take the time to be. I am enjoying looking at everyone because for the most part, as I am speaking with you this morning, I will be looking at a blue dot. And so I won't be feeling your energy. but I know that it's there. I know that your peaceful energy is going to come through. I know that as I am speaking, as you are there in your various sacred spaces, that you are connecting with the divine within. which is what we're going to be remembering and embracing today. That's why we come together in spiritual community. And so thank you. Thank you for inviting me to be with you again. To repeat our affirmation today, it's an adaptation of an affirmation that's in the Unity Advent booklet this month. Divine peace is always present, awaiting my call. Divine peace is always present, awaiting my call. And our scripture, which again is taken from the Advent booklet, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, 
will guard your hearts and your minds. You know, as I was preparing for this message today, I began to think about all the different times in my life when I have uh, wanted to be at more peace. You know, I want to be at peace. And what came to mind was a couple of years ago, as I believe most of you know, I moved from Overland Park, Kansas to Oceanside, California. And I moved from a quiet, peaceful community in Overland Park to a lovely community in Oceanside, California. And the community in Oceanside, California had this major, I would say highway, <laughs> very close to my house. And cars and motorcycles would zoom up and down that highway all hours of the day and night. And at night when I was trying to sleep, I felt anything but at peace. And so I fretted and fretted, and of course I couldn't go running out my door and say, stop, stop revving your engine, stop being so loud. Don't you know there are people who are trying to sleep? I couldn't do that. And so then I said, well, I have to move. So I finally, I found a place in San Marcos, not that far from Oceanside. And while the move was a good move. The notion of finding peace outside of myself was an interesting notion. Because, you know, we don't get peace outside of ourselves. True peace really begins from within. That is what we are talking about today, living from the divine peace that resides within us. Peace is an enduring spiritual thing, especially this time of year. But my question today is, how do we live from peace, especially when there is so much noise and chaos and disruption all around us? How do we center ourselves to live from peace? Does one simply say, make it so? I don't think so. Living from peace requires choice. It requires intention. It requires attention. And we must make the first step towards that peace. And we begin by understanding its origins. As our affirmation said, divine peace is always present. It's not something that is temporary. It's not something that we go out and purchase like a Christmas present. It's a divine quality that all of us possesses. And as Doug indicated in his introduction, today is the second Sunday of Advent. And the second Sunday of Advent has 
the theme peace always it's enduring you could say and so as we take time to call forth the peace from within us we even for a moment change the energy in our lives in our surroundings with each other it may be imperceptible or you may be able to feel it slightly but that change is there that change does occur there are countless people over the ages over millennia who have come into this world to show us how to live from peace of course jesus christ the buddha I would say Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., Coretta Scott King, who often does not get the recognition for the peace that she so brilliantly shared and so humbly and lovingly shared with all of us. Dr. Maya Angelou is another and certainly Mother Teresa. But there are so many others whose names we know and countless others who are unknown to us, but who nonetheless shared the peace from within them so that the world could be more peaceful. Today, I'd like to remind everyone of another person whose name may not be known to many people, but I would guess that many of you, if not all of you, recognize this person's name. Jill Jackson Miller. Jill Jackson Miller lived in the area where you live. Her young life was anything but peaceful, however. She was orphaned as a young child and placed in foster care. She experienced serious depression at different points in her life, which led to an attempted suicide. That experience, however, was turned into a conscious spiritual journey. And Jill Jackson Miller credited silent unity and new thought principles for helping her regain her life. But I would suggest that the principles she learned enabled her mind to, to do what I would say open up to what was already in her heart. The principles that she learned enabled her to unearth her talent and heart-centered knowledge and then share it with the world. You know her as the author of Let There Be Peace on Earth and Let It Begin With Me. That song, which is world renown has been translated into dozens of languages could be viewed as an anthem for peace an anthem for peace and so right now let us 
does affirm these words. And in affirming these words, we reaffirm the peace within us. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God, our creator, we are family. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let's breathe into that. Breathe into that. As we reaffirm the peace within each of us. In my readings about Jill, I found that she often said, peace has to begin in our own hearts. Peace has to begin in our own hearts. If we are to influence peace and live in peace and live from peace, it has to begin within our own hearts, she said. And living through the life challenges that she did and embracing the spiritual principles she studied, she created within her a deep understanding of what it means to live from peace. As today's scripture says, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, and I would add all human understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds. So divine peace resides within us. We know this, and yet we so often forget this, which is why we need to have this kind of community, if you will, to assist us in supporting us in remembering, remembering what we possess. And as divine peace lives within us, it does indeed open our minds to extraordinary experiences for ourselves and others. And just as Jill Jackson Miller allowed herself to live from peace. Another example that I'd like to share with you just for a moment is Nelson Mandela. Remember, he was imprisoned for 27 years. But upon his release from prison, this is what he said. Peace is not just the absence of conflict. Peace is the creation of an environment where all can flourish, regardless of race, color, creed, religion, gender, class, caste, or any other social markers of difference. Yes, that is the power of divine peace. It's a quality that we all possess, an inherent quality. Nelson Mandela became president 
of South Africa. Something that was unheard of during the decades of apartheid. But he did not allow the outward circumstances to squelch what he had within himself. And we are not to allow outward circumstances to impede our growth, to impede our power, to impede our brilliance, to impede the contributions that we have to this world. So today on this second Sunday of Advent, how do you live? from the peace that surpasses all human understanding. How do you live from your peace? This is your possession. How do you live from that? You have choice. You make your intention. You put your attention to it. And so by going within and engaging in the silence, by complimenting another, a friend, a coworker, even a stranger, by offering a helping hand to those who need a helping hand, by cooperatively and compassionately working with others toward a common goal of understanding differences and honoring the gifts that everyone brings all promote peace on earth. These are all ways that each and every one of us can live from the peace within us. But these are just examples. You know what is yours to do. You know the talents that you have to be on earth and shared and cultivated with others to, being, to bring peace in our world. We don't simply say, make it so, and magically peace will happen across our land. No, we call it forth from within us. And we live from that peace to attain and maintain a world that works for all of us. President John F. Kennedy, the president who signed the legislation that created a permanent Peace Corps, said this Peace is a daily, a weekly, a monthly process, gradually changing opinions, slowly eroding old barriers, quietly building new structures. And also at that signing, he said, peace does not rest in the charters and covenants in the paper. It lies in the hearts and minds of all people. One of the people that has inspired me for many years, in addition to Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King and my father, Reverend Everton Hawkins, is Dr. Maya Angelou. She had 
been my go-to person in her poetry when I have felt a little off-center or less than peaceful in my heart. I have used her poetry to, to quiet me down, to remember who I am and what I possess. So I accentuate our lesson this morning with a poem that is so fitting for today. And the title of that poem is Amazing Peace. Thunder rumbles in the mountain passes and lightning rattles the eaves of our houses. Flood waters await us in our avenues. Snow falls upon snow, falls upon snow to avalanche over unprotected villages. The sky slips low and gray and threatening. We question ourselves. What have we done to so affront nature? We worry God. Are you there? Are you there really? Does the covenant you made with us still stand? Into this climate of fear and apprehension, Christmas enters. Streaming lights of joy, ringing bells of hope, and singing carols of forgiveness high up in the bright air. The world is encouraged to come away from rancor, come the way of friendship. It is the glad season. Thunder ebbs to silence and lightning slips quietly in the corner. Flood waters recede into memory. Snow becomes a yielding cushion to aid us as we make our way to higher ground. Hope is born again in the faces of children. It rides on the shoulders of our aged as they walk into their sunsets. Hope spreads around the earth, brightening all things, even hate, which crouches breeding in dark corridors. In our joy, we think we hear a whisper. At first, it is too soft, then only half heard. We listen carefully as it gathers strength. We hear a sweetness. The word is peace. It is loud now, it is louder, louder than the explosion of bombs. We tremble at the sound, we are thrilled by its presence. It is what we have hungered for, not just the absence of war, but true peace. A harmony of spirit, a comfort of courtesies, security for our beloveds and their beloveds. We clap hands and welcome the peace of Christmas. We beckon this good season to wait a while with us. We, Baptist and Buddhist, Methodist and Muslim, say come, peace. Come and fill us and our world with your majesty. We, the Jew and Jainist, the Catholic and the Confucian, implore you to stay a while with us. 
so we may learn by your shimmering light how to look beyond complexion and see community. It is Christmas time, a halting of hate time on this platform of peace, we can create a language to translate ourselves into ourselves and to each other. At this holy instant, we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ into the great religions of the world. We jubilate the precious advent of trust. We shout with glorious tongues at the coming of hope. All the earth's tribes loosen their voices to celebrate the promise of peace. We, angels and mortals, believers and non-believers, look heavenward and speak the word aloud. Peace. We look at our world and speak the word aloud. Peace. We look at each other, then into ourselves. And we say without shyness, or apology, or hesitation. Peace, my brother. Peace, my sister. Peace, my soul. And now let us prepare for meditation. I invite you to get more comfortable, if you will, in your various sacred spaces. I invite you to take a deep breath. And another. And yet another. And as you allow your breath to move gently yet fully into your heart space, we allow the peace that is within each of us to move through us and inform every cell of our body temples. I also invite you to close your eyes if that is comfortable for you. As I lead you in this guided meditation on peace. Peace is not just the absence of war. True peace is a harmony of spirit, a comfort of courtesies, security for our beloveds and their beloveds. Peace, our divine nature, we implore you to stay a while as you move within us in this moment so we may learn by your shimmering light that we feel, that we see how to look beyond complexion and see community. 
on this platform of peace. We create a language to translate ourselves to ourselves and to each other. We jubilate the precious advent of trust. We celebrate the divine energy of peace. We look inward. We see peace. We feel peace. We call forth peace. We create true peace in our world. As we express without shyness, without apology or hesitation, we feel peace. We express peace, my brother, peace, my sister, peace, my soul. And we now move this knowing of peace into the silence, into the silence. And now as we bring our attention back into our various sacred spaces, individually and collectively, we feel a more profound sense of peace. We share this peace, our knowing of peace with the world, with each other, with our community, and so it is. <laughs> <laughs> 